Welcome to uh, Intro to C Programming. Today we are going to write a program using function prototypes. And uh, here is the program that we are going to write. So we're going to write a program to ask the user to enter a positive number. We're then going to print out all of the numbers that are less than that number that divide it evenly. And then we're also going to print out all of the numbers that are less than that number that do not divide the number evenly. We're going to assume that we're going to stay positive so that we don't need to uh, consider negative numbers that divide it evenly. Otherwise, this problem, um, we would have a few more numbers that we'd have to print out. So we're going to simplify it slightly by just printing out all of the positive numbers that divide it evenly and the positive numbers that do not divide it evenly. Okay, so go ahead and open up uh, Visual Studio and create a new project and make sure it's a Win32 console application. I'm going to name mine function prototypes. Go to application settings, make sure console application selected, select empty project and then click finish. Okay, in the Solution Explorer, let's add a new source file, a CPP file, and I'm going to name it function prototypes.cpp. Feel free to name it whatever you would like. It does not have to be named that. Uh, we're going to get our area here in the middle now for typing, and we're ready to start our program. So, first thing that I'm going to do, if we want to do any kind of input or output in C, we're going to need to include the standard io.h header file. The entry point to our code is the main method. It takes no parameters and it returns void. For those of you who are using Linux or Mac, you may have to have it return an int and then just have it return one or zero somewhere down at the bottom of that function. This still has to be named main though. Okay, so we're going to start off by prompting the user to enter a positive uh, number. We're going to need to read this number in. So let's just create a number. I'll name it num. Then we're going to print out to the user. Please enter a positive integer. And we're going to read it in to our num variable. OK, the first thing that I want to do is let's go ahead and check and make sure that they've entered a positive number. We're going to create a function. We'll call it from right here. Uh, we'll do that in just a second. So let's come up above the main function and let's create another function which is going to be called uh, check if positive or check positive. Maybe we'll just name it that. We'll have it return an integer to us which will be true or false for whether the number is positive or not. We'll call it check positive and it needs to take a number as a parameter. Now, this variable here that it takes as a parameter, I've called number. The scope of this variable is limited to the check positive function. So even though down here, I'm going to call this function by saying check positive, and then I'm going to pass num into it. All that's happening is the value of the variable num is going to be copied into the value of the variable number. These two variables, num and number, are completely different from each other. There's no relationship between those two variables. The only relationship is that they're going to contain the same value at the time that the check positive function is called. Other than that, this variable here can be named absolutely anything at all um, as long as I'm passing an integer in for it. And I can pass in different variables. Maybe I had other integer variables down here in the main function. I could pass those integer variables in also. All that the compiler is looking for is that I pass an int in as the parameter to the check positive function. OK, inside of this function now, I just want to check and see if this uh, integer that was passed in is positive or not. So I'll say if this number is greater than 0, then I'll return uh, a 1. Otherwise, I'll return a zero. Now, the way that I've written this function uh, is uh, the way that most programmers uh, would write this. Chances are, most of you would probably write it like this. And this works as well. There's nothing wrong with this, because 
if the number is greater than zero, you're going to return a one, and else, otherwise, you're going to return a zero. Now, the reason that I would write it like this instead is because it means the exact same thing. If I've gotten into this if statement, I'm going to have returned from my function so no other lines would execute. So I don't need to put an else statement there. I can just have the next line of code be a return zero. So this is going to be more of the preferred way. Uh, professional programmers most likely will do this. It makes your code slightly more efficient uh, rather than having the else statement. It also gives us two fewer lines of code uh, in our program. So uh, now I've got my check positive function. It's going to return a 1 if the number is positive. It's going to return a 0 otherwise. So now down here, I'm going to create another integer variable. And we'll name pause or neg. And set that here. Pause or neg equals check positive. And now I can say if pause or neg uh, equals 0, then I'm just going to print out something to the user that says uh, you didn't enter a positive integer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return from my function here. I'm going to exit my program. Now, we could probably put a loop in here, prompt the user again, hey, enter a positive integer. Um, and in your programs, I know that I've asked you to do that, however, your assignments. However, uh, here, the purpose of this is so that we can play around with the function prototypes as opposed to uh, trying to add a lot of logic into this program. Um, okay, so let's go ahead right here and just uh, do a printout, say the number was positive. Okay, and let's put a new line there. And let's build our program, make sure that it's going to run, try it with a positive number and try it with a negative number and make sure that you get uh, the results that you're expecting here. Okay, so it works for a positive number. Let's try a negative one now. Okay, it worked for a negative number. I can see I probably want to put a new line character in here. So I want to rebuild my program now that I made that change. Okay, let's try zero. Zero is not a positive integer, so that seems like it's working properly for me here. Uh, this all works. It compiled for me. Now what I want to do is I want to show you what we're going to be uh, talking about today, which is the function prototypes. I want to take this function right here, and I'm going to cut it from there, and I'm just going to come down underneath my main function and paste it there. And let's go ahead and build our program and see what happens. Well, you see that my program didn't build. It says build failed. This warning on ScanF, this is a Visual Studio Windows warning. It wants us to use a different uh, function called scan f underscore s. This is only required in Windows. It's just a warning. So um, I usually just ignore that one because the scan f function works. If you want, you can look up what the difference is between scan f and scan f underscore s. Uh, you just need to be careful if you were to use that because in other operating systems or other compilers it might not work correctly. That's why I usually ignore that error. Uh, this one here though, this is the one that we're working on now. It says uh, uh, function prototypes.cpp line 9. You see that when I double click on the message, it actually takes me to that line. It says check positive identifier not found. So it's saying it doesn't know what this identifier is because this function has not yet been defined. It's defined down here underneath the main function. Uh, so I have two choices. One, I can take the check positive function and I can define it above where it's used. So just putting it above the main function would be one solution. The other solution which is what we learned in this le uh, lesson, is that I can just create a function prototype. The way that a function prototype works, it has the return type, it has the name of the function, it has the parentheses with the type of parameters that it takes. Optionally, I could put the name of the parameter also, but I don't need to, and I follow that by a semicolon. If I add this in, I'm going to put a comment here so we understand what this is. This is the function prototype. When I add that in, if I build my program now, you see that my program now succeeds, and when I run it, it's going to run exactly the same as what I showed you uh, earlier. So it is still going to work uh, and run properly for me. Okay, uh, so that's the function prototypes. This little example right here, uh, what we typically do is your main function is typically going to be the function at the bottom of your code. You would put your other functions 
uh, above your main function. However, what this saves us from having to do is worry about the ordering of any of the other functions. So if I had functions that called other functions, which is very common uh, in programs, I don't need to worry about uh, the order of them as long as I have my function prototypes up at the top. So, uh, and then I'll put here, this starts my uh, function implementations. Okay, so I've got this much done now. I'm going to scroll back down here a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this printf. That was just a debug statement for me to see that I got to that line of code and that it was my check positive function was working correctly. Okay, back to uh, what I'm trying to do in my program. Uh, print out all of the numbers less than the number uh, that divide that number evenly. Okay, so I'm going to create a function here. I'll call it uh, print numbers. that, uh, let's see, what can I name this function? Oh, print divide evenly, there we go. And uh, I will pass in the number that the user typed in. Now I need to create this function, so somewhere up here, I'm gonna create this. It's not gonna need to return anything, it's just gonna do some printing out for me. And again, the name of this variable in this function, completely irrelevant to the names of variables in any other function. The scope of this variable is limited to within this curly brace and this curly brace. So it's only what's inside of that function uh, has access to this variable. Anywhere else doesn't. So you see that I've named this variable the same as the variable I named here. These are two completely separate variables that point to different locations in main memory. Okay, so... Uh, print divide evenly. So now how do I figure out all of the numbers that divide that number evenly? Well, I'm going to create a for loop that will start at 1. We'll go up to the number. We can go up to less than the number and adding 1 each time I come through my for loop. I'm going to have an if statement inside of here that says if number modded by i equals 0, that means that I divides my number evenly. Because if the remainder after I divide is equal to zero, that means that there was no remainder. So it divides it evenly. So here, I'll just be able to do a printf, print out my value of i, um, and maybe I want to put a, a tab after it so that it spaces them all out. And then after my for loop, just for some formatting, I will put the backslash in. Before my for loop, I'll say numbers that divide my number evenly. Something like that, and I'll put my number in there. So the printf, that's just a little formatting so that it looks kind of nice for me. Um, okay, that should work. Let's go ahead and build it. Make sure that it compiles and then we can run our program. Okay, it built. The positive integer, let's go with 20. Numbers that divide 20 evenly 1, 2, 4, 5, and 10. That looks good to me. I think those are all of the numbers that divided evenly. Okay, um, and then my last step is going to be print out all of the numbers that don't divide it evenly. Print divide, let's say print not divide evenly, and pass my num into it. So let's create that function now, void print not divide evenly, pass my number into it. Again, going to look very similar to this, numbers that do not divide my number evenly. So now it's just going to be if number mod i does not equal zero, that means that it didn't divide it evenly. Put a new line at the end just for formatting. And we should be able to build this up. Does it compile? It did. Start without debugging. Numbers that divide 20 evenly, 1, 2, 4, 5, 10. Numbers that do not divide 20 evenly, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So that looks pretty good. Uh, that is what I expected to get. Um, 
the formatting here could be a little nicer. Maybe put some new lines instead of tabs. I mean, my, my command prompt is not that large, so putting the tabs in the middle there made it wrap to the next line. Uh, but you can see that the program is functional. What I want to do is I want to do a couple more things here. Uh, if you notice, uh, inside of both of these functions, I have something that looks very, very similar. I have a for loop, which the for loop's exactly the same. I have an if statement. The if statement's very similar. The only difference is that one of them is not equal and one of them is equal. So I want to create another function uh, here. And uh, um, I'm not going to have it return anything to me. It's going to be called, uh, let's see what we can call this, uh, loop for division. And I'm going to pass in the number into it. I'm going to pass in one other parameter, which is uh, divide evenly. Now, I'm going to put a little note. If divide evenly equals a 1, that means... I want to check numbers that divide number evenly. If divide evenly equals zero, that means I want to check numbers that do not divide number evenly. So in here what I'm going to do is I'm still going to have my loop just the same. So int i for i equal one, i less than number i plus plus it's, it's very similar but now i'm going to say if divide evenly equals one and number mod i equals zero then i'm going to do something else if divide evenly equals zero and number mod i does not equal zero then i'm going to do a printout on percent D for I. I'm actually going to do the same thing here. <clears throat> so if I wanted, what I could do here, and I'm going to show you something, I could say if that and this, or if that and that, then I'm going to print it out. So if either of those is the case, I'm going to print out the same thing. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so that's loop for division. So now all I need to do is right here, I'm just going to call loop for division. And if I want it to divide evenly, I'm going to pass my number into it. I'm going to pass a 1. I delete all of that. And here, it's the same thing, loop for division. I'm going to pass the number, and in this case, I'm going to pass a 0 from this one. I can get rid of my int i since I'm not using i in those two functions anymore. My code should work exactly the same way. I've just moved the logic a little bit so that I have a few more functions. The logic is a little bit more distributed now. And you see that if I run it with 20, that I get the same answers. Okay, to show you how we utilize the function prototypes now, I realize that I might be going a little fast, so if you've needed to pause the video, that's fine. I'm going to take this function right here and I'm going to move it down. And I'm going to put it right here. Now you see that when I try to build this now, I am going to get build failed. And the problem is that loop for division is not found on this line or that line. I have two errors because it's down below. Let's go ahead and create a function prototype for it. Loop for division is void. It takes two integers as parameters. I don't have to have the names of the variables, the names of the parameters. I could if I wanted to, but I don't need to. Since I'm up here, I'm going to go ahead and do my print divide evenly, and I'm going to do my print not divide evenly, just so that I don't need to worry about the orders of any of these functions. I can order them however I want, everything is still going to work. I can move them around, everything will still compile and run. Build this program up. It should succeed now. Start without debugging, go ahead and run it. So there I've run uh, 50. 1, 2, 5, 10, and 25 are the only numbers that are less than 50 that divide it evenly, and you should see all of the other numbers that are less than 50 that do not divide it evenly. Okay, so that's our program for today. That's how function prototypes work. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.